Well, good morning and thank you for joining me for our time of morning prayer on Thursday. As I was thinking about what to share with you today, I found a book on my bookshelf called Celtic Daily Light, A Spiritual Journey Throughout the Year, and today's reading is quite poignant, certainly for me. This one is called When the Going Gets Tough. In the book of James we read, Be sure that your endurance carries you all the way, without failing, so that you may be complete. Going to begin our time with that lovely Teze, Bless the Lord, O my soul. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Please forgive the gender specifics of this poem that has been attributed to Columbanus's monks as they were rowing up the Rhine against the tide. The tempests howl, the storms dismay, but manly strength can win the day. Heave lads and let the echoes ring, for clouds and squalls will soon pass on, and victory lie with work well done. Heave, lads, and let the echoes ring. Hold fast, survive, and all is well. God sent you worse, he'll calm this swell. Heave, lads, and let the echoes ring. So Satan acts to tire the brain, and by temptation souls are slain. Think, lads of Christ, and echo him. The king of virtues vowed a prize, for him who wins.
for him who tries. Think, lads, of Christ and echo him. Our psalm today is Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. I will cry out to God Most High, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me, for he reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me, into the midst of it they themselves have fallen. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake my glory, awake lute and harp, I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens, and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, heard these things, that he sent to Joab, king of Madon, to the king of Shimron, to the king of Ashaph, and to the kings who were from the north, in the mountains, in the plains south of Chinneroth, in the lowland, and in the heights of Dor on the west to the Canaanites in the east, and in the west the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite below Hermon in the land of Mizpah. So they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude with many horses and chariots. And when all these kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them, and suddenly by the waters of Merom there they attacked them. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, to the brook Mesperoth, and to the valley of Mizpah, eastward at that they attacked, until none of them were left remaining. So Joshua did to them as the Lord had told him. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire. Joshua turned back at that time and took Hazor and struck its king with the sword, for Hazor was formerly the head of all those kingdoms. And they struck all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword utterly destroying them. There was none left breathing. Then he burned Hazor with fire. So all the cities of those kings and all of their kings Joshua took and struck them with the edge of the sword, and he destroyed them as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded. But as for the cities that stood on their mounds, Israel burned none of them, except Hazor only, which Joshua burned. And all the spoil of these cities and the livestock, the children of Israel took as booty for themselves. 
but they struck every man with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, and none were left breathing. And the Lord had commanded Mo as the Lord had commanded Moses his servant, so Moses had commanded Joshua, and Joshua did. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Today's canticle is called A Song of Deliverance. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy all that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 26. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. And so Paul stretched out his hand and answered, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews especially because you are an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first, if they were willing to testify that, according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand and I am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise our twelve tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities." While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. And so I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and through all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. 
For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple, and they tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead, and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. God of love, whose compassion never fails. We bring before you the troubles and perils of people and nations, the sighing of prisoners and captives, the sorrows of the bereaved, the helplessness of the weak, the despondency of the weary. O Lord, draw near to each of us, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you this day those who are in pain, those, Lord, who cry at night, I wish to God it were morning, and in the morning cry, I wish to God it were night. Lord, bring your healing, bring your peace. Lord, we bring before you those whose problems are not physical, those who are haunted by the nightmares of their past or of the spectres of their future. We pray for those whose minds are shackled by depression and fear. Lord Jesus, bring healing, bring peace. Lord, we bring before you those in whose experience light has become darkness. We pray, Lord, for those whose lives have left them stunned in their souls and silent in their conversation. For those who do not know where to turn or who to turn to. For those whose life seems to have no purpose anymore. Jesus, bring healing, bring peace. 
Lord, we bring before you those whose troubles we do not know, or whose names we do not know. Lord, you are skilled alone to know the cure for every sickness and every soul. If, Lord, by our lives your grace may be known, then in us, through us, and if need be, despite us, let your kingdom come. On all those who tend the sick, counsel the distressed, sit with the dying, we ask your blessing, that in caring for your people, they may meet and serve their Lord. For those, Lord, who in this land administer the agencies of health and welfare, we ask your guidance that in all they do, human worth may be valued and the service of human need fully resourced. This and all our prayers we ask in the name of him whose flesh and blood have made all God's children special. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to read again um, from Celtic Daily Light. This time a piece of poetry from Carmina Gedelsia. In the steep common path of our calling, whether it be easy or uneasy to our flesh, whether it be bright or dark for us to follow, may your perfect guidance be given us. Be a shield to us from the ploys of the deceiver, and in each hidden thought our minds start to weave, be our director and our canvas. Even though dogs and thieves try to wrench us away from the fault, be our shepherd of glory near us. Whatever matter, issue or problem that threatens to bring us to grief, hide it from our eyes and drive it from our hearts forever. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.